Philadelphia. A radio.com station. Now, from the Malamut and Associates Law Studios. Investor Schooling Live with Phil Falcone and Larry Steinhaus on Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Schooling Live. Coming to you from the great town of Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Uh, yes, that's right. We're doing the show remotely today from InvestorSchooling.com uh, because the studio is still closed, but they'll be opening up soon. So I am Phil Falcone here with my business partner and founder of Investor Schooling, Larry Steinhaus. And uh, get ready to learn about real estate and stock option investing. Call us with your questions now at 855-939-1137. That's 855-939-1137. Yes, it's correct. This is a live program, so you can call us right now. And no matter what we're talking about, we don't care. Give us a call. We love to talk to people out there. We'd much rather be talking to live humans than be talking to each other, which we're sick of each other. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Investor Schooling is located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, serving the Philadelphia area in a real brick-and-mortar building. That's right. We're real guys, real Philadelphia guys, uh, who have a, a school in Langhorne, and you can come check it out two nights a week. So, we we're, uh, give you an invitation to come out Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Come find out what we're all about. We're here every Thursday and every Monday, but if you're coming for the, a free... Uh, complimentary class you want to do that on Thursday nights Thursday nights is for new people to come and check us out and see what it's all about so Larry what's going on man what's happening Phil boy um, so you know just a pretty much a, uh, a regular day yesterday I came back from my cruise had a really good time you know I, I, I actually I came back from the cruise this morning had a really good time I uh, we, we went out to dinner last night a really cool restaurant with about you know must have been about 500 people in the restaurant it was kind of cool and, um, you know, went to the park this morning and hung out and drank some beer with a couple of friends. Oh, yeah, and then I woke up. <laughs> you guys should have seen you guys should have seen Phil's expression. That was it was priceless. He was like, where is he going? He's lost it. He's totally lost it. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. It's been it's been it's been tough. And, you know, if you guys are watching me on if you guys have been paying attention to me on Facebook, you can see I'm venting and screaming and yelling a lot. Which is kind of interesting. Um, it's not not an unusual trait of mine, but it is something that I do, and I've had a little bit of fun with that. Some uh, some interesting things, other things going on, like some protests tomorrow. You want you want to talk about the protests for a minute? Well, we got a segment. We're going to talk about it. So. Oh, okay, that's cool. Let's let's do that. Yeah. So I dedicated a whole segment to your uh, your protesting ideas. I love it. I love it. So the other things too, if you guys should know, of course, if you guys are watching for the first time or seeing it for the first time. You guys want to go to investorschooling.com, and when you go there, you'll be given the choice to just to go to a class on Thursday. But of course, the class is online, so we'll also be able to you'll also be able to log in and through Zoom be able to talk to us online on Thursday. We'll bring you in. We'll talk talk to you about real estate investing. We'll talk to you about stock options trading. We'll talk to you about basic financial literacy and how to take care of this market. Hey, how to how to make money in this market? Because this market's going to be a lot of fun. If you guys know, if you guys are ready, if you guys are ready. The, the information that you're going to learn now on how to invest in real estate, how to invest in the stock market, is going to make you very happy five to ten years from now. And honestly, look, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but the reality is this didn't affect me. It really didn't. I mean, it affected me a little bit emotionally and a little bit mentally, but it definitely did not affect me financially. And you got to remember that I've got properties. I mean, you know, Phil's got properties. Some of his properties got hit, hit a little bit because they were rental properties. They were vacation rentals. We'll a little talk about bit. That. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> but but you have to also understand that because of the way we teach people to take care of themselves and set themselves up, it didn't affect us that much. I mean, even with Phil's properties, it's not going to affect them that much. It's going to stink. It's not going to be great, but it is what it is. So, look, if you guys want to find out more about how to how – to, uh, Set yourself up in the future with trusts, LLCs, and proper planning, and being able to get all the money you need when you need the money. We're going to be teaching that again on Thursday. What else, Phil? What else do we got? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about how the corona has affected or will affect the real estate market. We're going to talk about why short sales 
are going to become omnipotent. Very, very important, my friends. You want to learn that. We're going to talk about our stock option picks of the week. We also have uh, a few questions that came in. Uh, this one didn't come with a name, but uh, the question was, is the danger in the stock market over? Now, this one did come with a name. It's from a guy named Nostradamus from Philadelphia, and he wrote, is this the end of the world? So we'll have to answer that question. Actually, if it truly is Nostradamus, he should be telling us. That's true, yeah. <laughs> uh, and someone else sent in a, uh, a question, should investors get a real estate license? So there's a few things that we could talk about. You, uh, you want to take a couple of minutes and talk about your big protest? My, oh, the big protest tomorrow, yes. So tomorrow, Harrisburg, the protest is going to be interesting. So I, I've, I've been looking at some of the groups out there on Facebook. Uh, one of them is Reopen PA. By the way, if you're, if you're watching this from Reopen PA or listening to this from Reopen PA, hey, do, do me a favor, put a comment in. I'm curious. This group, I mean, it grew so fast. I, I, I was amazed. And these guys are pretty much doing their protest thing uh, tomorrow. And it looks like anywhere from, t honestly, anywhere from 10 to 100,000 people are going to show up in Harrisburg tomorrow. Now, there, I, I really want to go. I, I don't know if you want to go, Phil, but I, I really want to go. But my, part of my problem is I, I have a feeling we're going to get stuck there. And if we get stuck there, we have a mastermind meeting tomorrow night with our students, and I don't think I'll make it back in time. So, you know, as, as much as I'd like to go, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to go. I, we'll, we'll discuss it. I'll see if I can go. But uh, I'm, I really would like to go. I really would like to be in that protest and be part of it. Um, I, if I had the equipment, I'd probably do a live from there. Maybe I could do some kind of small live from there with, uh, with Facebook. But, but I, I don't know. So I, I may or may not be there. But either way, I'm wishing everybody good luck on that protest because it's time to open up the doors. It really is. It's time to go back to work. It's time to start making money again. Look. Phil and I are okay. Uh, I mean, you may, be see me, you may see me protesting on Facebook and saying how horrible it is that we've shut down the world. But it's not because I'm being selfish about it. It's because I look and I see people who own restaurants, see people who own barbershops, see people who own, who own stores and companies, and they're pulling their head, hair out of their heads. I mean, look, most companies, and, and I've owned quite a few companies in my life, most companies don't exactly, don't exactly... <laughs> <laughs> make enough money to put money in the bank every month. You know, th they barely make it. I I've owned companies where I've taken money out to survive every month. I've had to take money out, money out of my savings. But that was on top of money that I was making in the business. And I, I feel really sorry for this barbershop or this r small restaurant or, you know, or some of the restaurants like right now in our hometown in Doylestown that are all going to close and not going to be able to reopen. We had a restaurant around the corner from us, an Italian restaurant that we always went to. And we heard that they, they didn't make it. They're done. They actually are packing their stuff up today. Yeah, They're that's when you're really going to start to regret it, you know. Right now, nobody's, everybody's worried about their own personal finances. But three months from now, when, there's no res when half the restaurants that you used to go to are all out of business, when all the uh, hair salons and everything are gone, uh, we're all going to be looking pretty ratty and uh, having some issues getting a good dinner somewhere. Yeah, you know, I hate to say it, but, but it's really interesting. But if you want to know a really good business to get into right now, open a restaurant. I, I know you think I'm crazy, but by the time you open, by the time you have everything set up and by the time you have your marketing going, this will probably be over. And if it's probably over, that means people will be rushing to go out to dinner. So it's a really great time to open a restaurant, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but it's the truth. Plus, you've got people who are closing the restaurants that were established, and people know where they are, and they go there, like the one around the corner from us that closed, uh, you know, big pizzeria with a, with a dining hall in the back, and it's closed. You're talking about Roman? Roman Delight, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. And I feel sorry for those people as well. I mean, they, these were great people. We used to go there all the time. Uh, Linda and I would go there. We'd get a pizza whenever I went there to cheat on my diet. We'd get this big pizza, big french fries, and a couple of cocktails. Yeah, they have good it's food done. there. It's done. So they're going to be closed, and we're going to have to go somewhere else. But somebody else is going to go in there, and now's the time for you to go in there because now's the time for, to open a restaurant because it's going, to be, it's going to be great by the time you have it all set up. Everything will change. All right, so uh, when we come back, we're going to get into the topic of how will the corona affect the real estate market. So stick around. We're going on a commercial break for two minutes, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. 
I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, investorschooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executex Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executex Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, it's Larry Sinus, and we're back. So, by the way, we're, we are we are actually in the basement of Investor Schooling Live. We're in the basement of Investor Schooling Live, and we are transmitting from the basement, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're actually at the at the studio right now in our homemade studio, which obviously is not as clear or as good as the regular studio, but we're doing a really good job. I actually I, I'm actually getting some good feedback on the fact that for our first. Our first setup down here, we're, we're being able, we're able to do it. And it's actually working pretty well. So, so some of the technical difficulties you're hearing are just because, hey, look, it's our first time. But we promise by next week we're gonna have all the kinks, all the kinks out. All right, look, guys. So here's the deal. So if you guys want to come to Investor Schooling and learn more about how to invest in real estate, how to invest in stock options, you can come go to investorschooling.com. And when you click that says you want to attend Thursday's class, you'll be given an option to be online so you could do it from your home it's actually a zoom meeting you guys have all heard about zoom meetings and don't worry we have our security set up really well so there won't be anything funny on the zoom meeting <laughs> heard some interesting stories about that all right so what do we got phil what do we got going on now well let's talk about uh, how the corona will affect the real estate market oh that's a great topic all right you want me to start yeah sure well the first thing that i'm seeing is i think the the lenders in this area and probably all over the country are going to tighten the purse strings on their ability to lend out money or their desire to lend out money. So I'm hearing scuttlebutt about that immediately. Uh, another thing that I've noticed right away is I'm working on a big refi for uh, it's about $650,000. And I keep uh, contacting my person at TD Bank to say, what's going on with it? What's taking so long? What's going on? Obviously, I know it's taking so long. But uh, what they tell me is they're spending all their time doling out the PPP money and the SBA money. So there must be some uh, nice margins in it. So every banker in every in 5,000 different banks across, uh, across the country... Yeah, are, are probably saying that, um, you know, we got a better way to make money right now. Sorry. Hey, John. Uh, I, I know, John, we got John in the, uh, in the uh, studio over there. And as you can tell, we're doing our thing. Um, we had a, a Facebook guy say that they couldn't hear Phil's mic. Is, is Phil's mic working over there, John? 
Okay, cool. That's fine. All right. Yeah, keep going, though. It may just be something with Facebook. All right. So these are the two things that I'm uh, immediately concerned about because I have a huge refi going on that I'd like to lock in some of these low rates and get that going. But uh, when my person tells me that we're working on PPP and SBA, they're basically saying, we ain't working on your loan. <laughs> okay. Right. Now maybe they're not working on my loan because they're making great margins doing that other stuff, or maybe they're not working on my loan because they're not lending any money. Wait till I tell you what they're making on a PPP. I got the inside track when we get into it. But actually, we have a caller. Uh, Josh is online. If you guys, if you want to, you want to put him through. John, tell us about. Bring, bring it on, John. Josh, what's your question? Hey guys. So I had a comment first. This is uh, really cool because the last time I was on the radio was in. 1985 or 86 when I won tickets to a Genesis concert here in New York. So this is, this is great. It's been, been a while since I've been on the airwaves. Good, good to be back. So here's my question. I'm struggling through. So I'm, I'm looking to acquire mobile home parks. I'm looking to sell them if I don't acquire them. And, you know, in the case of, and, a park where I would get it under contract and assign it to, you know, sign the contract to a potential buyer. I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm understanding cap rates now better. And what I don't understand is coming up with the final price, if you will, to get under contract and then, market like how like what's the math there what's the science what's the okay so here's, here's, a, here's a funny thing i'm going to say and obviously don't take it seriously but i want you to think about it for a minute how much do uh, you think all real estate is worth at this very minute i think all real estate at this very minute is really worth as much as somebody wants to pay for it right which is exactly zero at the current Time. Now that's not. That doesn't mean a month from now. At the current time. Right. So so. Uh, you know, zero. Yeah, I think it's zero because there's no buyers. There's buyers who have their own cash. There's buyers who have that's private money that's connections. That's there's buyers that have hard money true. connections. And, and like I said, don't take it seriously. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to be a little bit of a little bit funny, but I, but the point that I'm really trying to make is, listen, you guys have to wait and see how it works out. So how how will we know? How do we know? Uh, you know when it's going to stop? We don't know. We don't know if the market's going to go up or down in the next two months. I mean, it, it's, it's the obvious choice is it's going to go down, but we don't know yet. So let's just, you know, the best thing to do is hold out. But if you get something under contract, so you want to wholesale, it sounds like you want to wholesale mobile home parks, which is fantastic. But if you want to wholesale anything, even a house, like a $30,000 house in Philly, if you want, if you wanted to wholesale that, you're going to, you're going to have to pay less or you get it under contract. Uh, Phil likes to do this. You get it under contract and then you decide later, to go back to your seller and say, listen, due to the coronavirus stuff, my lenders wouldn't lend me as much money, blah, 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 whatever you want to say, and then you go back and you renegotiate it. So right now you got to do your best, your best guess using the numbers that you had before to evaluate it or the way you evaluated it before. And then from there, what we would do is, you know, you'd have to decide whether maybe that was a good choice or a bad choice, depending on what kind of activity you get when you, when you try to sell it. I hope I answered your question. I know it was a little, it was a little uh, convoluted along, but I'm hoping to ask you a question. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I think it does. So, so to recap, you know, I'll use the method that I use to to value it, and then go back and renegotiate. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, there's a lot okay. of different ways to, to, to value real estate. You got the cap rate calculation. You got the uh, you got the gross rent multiplier. You you've got the valuation times ten calculation. You've, uh, all of these things that I know you and I have uh, uh, spoken about at school before because we, yeah. we teach these strategies. But in, in the end, the one that I trust the most is I have the seller. I get the property under contract, and I have the seller give me all their financial data. I want to see their bank accounts. I want to see their rent rolls. I want to see their invoices. I want to see their bank accounts so I can actually see the rent money going into their bank every month consistently. So I want tax returns. I want two years of tax returns. I want two years of bank statements. Now, many a seller will just say, I'm not giving you all that stuff. And I said, well, fine. That's, then you're not selling me your property. 
because if I can't see all that information, if I cannot analyze it and confirm that this property is making what you say it makes, I cannot come up with a sales price because your building is strictly valued on how much rent money it makes. Excellent. All right. Okay. So, yeah, that's. I think. That's I think. Uh, yeah, I think we got some, some time to talk about this PPP. Thanks, Josh. Really appreciate the call, man. By the way. And um, yeah, can, I, can, I, can I ask one one quick follow up question? Sure. So, when, so I had somebody reach out to me, who he's a uh, telecommunications guy. He puts up telecom, the cellular towers, and he comes in. He's not putting up 5G with, towers, is he? I, I hope so. I hope he's putting up 6G, <laughs> in fact. So I won't go there, but I just thought it was really funny. Yeah, I, I, Don't I, holler so loud. I'll go, I'll go there. No, You're no, piercing no, my no. eardrums. <laughs> so this guy often goes and interacts with the owners of mobile home parks, and he reached out to me, and... He said, hey, you know, I can get you in touch with, with owners. So, obviously, I want to reward this guy. And what, what's a good payout for somebody who, like, will <laughs> find you or connect you with an owner of a park that wants to sell? So, so first, two, there's a two-part answer to that question. Believe it or not, the first part is okay. it's, actually, it's actually illegal because <laughs> he's practicing real estate without a license. But I promise you I'm not going to tell on you. So here's the okay. real answer is whatever you want to give. Oops, sorry about that. Whatever you whatever whatever it is you want to give him. If you want to give him, uh, if you want to give him, you know, five thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, a hundred bucks. It it doesn't. It, it's really it's really a matter. It's really up to you. Okay. So yeah, I mean, he'd just be making the, the intro. I, I think ten percent of whatever I get from it would be. That'd be great. Good. Yeah, I mean, if you do that, that'd yeah. be great. Sure. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys. Those are those Thanks are some good connections. Good connections. You got uh, it, man. I like yeah. those connections. Uh, those are good connections. Lonnie yeah. dealers, people who can put you together with uh, owners that want to sell, are people who are in the business dealing and talking to these guys all the time. Very cool. All right, let's. We got to talk about this PPP. This is an interesting thing. So the PPP, for you guys don't know, is a payroll protection program uh, that's through the SBA loans. And uh, so what you heard, uh, Frank is recommending. Okay, hold on, hold on a second here. Is, is that is let me see something here <laughs> how's this um, I know it's kind of a weird uh, situation here but we're trying to we're testing some microphones is this is this any better John I know uh, I'm sorry that we're doing this on the air but is this any better John okay all right let me come over here and share with Phil <laughs> Phil why don't you talk real quick while I just set something up real quick all right let me tell you my life story all right just do it okay cool <laughs> I'm coming over here now. <laughs> I started out in Hi. 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 All right, so here's the deal. So, here's the deal. so if you guys want you guys to know about the PPP, the PPP is interesting. So the payroll protection plan for the SBA, it, basically what it was for is for small businesses. As you know, it was all set up for small businesses, and the small businesses were supposed to generate, be able to get some money to pay their payroll so they could continue to stay in business. The problem with the payroll or the PPP was, first of all, they, they say they ran out of money last week. And it was interesting because my application was in process. And Friday morning, I get a phone call from the bank at 8 o'clock in the morning saying, oh, we're sorry, but they ran out of money. I'm like, oh, great. But she then said, you know, my banker then said that you can actually continue to get the PPP if, if and they're going to release more money. So our favorite person, Nancy Pelosi, has to release that money this week. Apparently, they're going to release it Tuesday ish, and hopefully that'll work. But here's what you need to do for your PPP. If you went to, if you actually went to your bank and it gave you a log, a log on or a click here to find out more, and they put you in a queue, and in that queue, they basically were supposed to reach out to you. But they, there were millions of people who applied for this thing, and the problem is because they put you in that queue, you're never going to be heard from. What happened with me was I got lucky and I f had someone, I had a connection at a small bank. And I I'll be honest with you, I don't even have an account at this bank. There just happened to be a connection at this bank. So I would call a small bank on Monday, tomorrow morning, call a small bank when it's in your area. And if you make a, and try to make a connection to that bank, and if you can, you need to have certain pieces of paper. First of all, just so you understand, you have to have payroll. So we have payroll at Investor Schooling. 
Uh, we have a few a few employees who work for us. And look, just like any other business, you know, it, it's affecting our business. So we were able to apply for it and say that it's affecting our business. But you must have payroll. So first of all, you have to have payroll. If you don't have payroll, you're not going to get uh, PPP. It's just not going to happen. The loan terms are pretty simple. A lot of people think that this is a forgiven loan. It may or may not be forgiven. Just understand, go into it with, with the idea that it won't be forgiven. It'll be a 1% loan. So it'll be a 1% loan. It has to be paid back in two years, six months, no payments, and then after that, it's interest only, and at the end of the term, you have to pay it back. So be prepared to pay it back. Will it be forgiven? Maybe, but don't go into it with the idea it's being forgiven. So you'll need to fill out a form with the bank, which is a, basically a two-page application. It's not hard at all. It's a two-page application. You'll have to give them your 941, which is your payroll, for the last quarter. And you'll have to give them a P&L for one year plus your corporate docs. If you have all that, and by the way, any corporation with employees is going to have a 941. Any any, any corporation doing any books at all is going to have a, uh, a one-year P&L, or you could even put it together if you want to. You could put it together out of your bank account. It's not that difficult. And then you want to get it over to the banker who you have a relationship with. Now, listen, here's the, uh, here's the problem. And you guys have seen this before. You've seen a bunch of people saying, hey, listen, why did, um, why did Ruth's Chris Steakhouse get $20 million? Well, I, first of all, I, I don't care that Ruth's Chris Steakhouse got $20 million. I care about what we're going to get because that's what we need to keep our business going in case this goes really bad. Right, so I don't care about what they what they're getting. But the reason they did is because the the small business is is uh, defined by anything less than 500 employees. So if you have 500, actually 500 employees or less. So Ruth Chris probably has less than 500 employees, and that's why they were able to qualify for it. Now here's the other thing: Why did the money run out so fast? The money ran out so fast because the small businesses like mine, like the barber shop, like the restaurant, didn't apply fast enough or didn't have a relationship with the bank, and the bank had a relationship with somebody like Ruth Chris Steakhouse. And the banks are getting 5% as a commission to set you up with this loan. And that's part of the problem. With 5% commission, why would they want to take, why would they want to go after somebody who's got who needs a $10,000 loan when they can go after Ruth Chris who a, needs a $20 million loan? And again, this is why you need to make sure that you have a relationship with a banker and you're in front of them and saying, "Hey, do my paperwork, do my paperwork, do my paperwork." That's going to make the difference. All right. If you guys have any questions on that, feel free to call in. Or if you have any questions, or if you want to put it on Facebook, feel free to put it on, on Facebook, and we'll answer some questions on that too. What do you think, Phil? What do you think, Sounds good. So why don't we talk about what we're going to come back and talk about. So we're going to go to break in a, in, for two minutes, and when we come back, we're going to talk about why our short sales are going to be omnipotent in this market. So get ready to learn about this, and we'll be back in two minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorne this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorne, 215-876-3002, InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executex Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executex Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701.
Hey everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. All right, all right. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. This is Phil Falcone, and on this next segment, we're going to talk about why I think short sales are going to be omnipotent. The, so, I like that word, omnipotent. That's pretty cool. I try to use words that you don't understand just to throw you off and see. It's a big word. Can you spell that word? I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, M N I P O T E N D. All right, all right. So, uh, I go on a lot of appointments with sellers. That's what I consider to be my highest and best function as a real estate investor is to be talking to sellers, whether that's on the phone or in person. Uh, I want to be talking to as many sellers as as I can humanly get in front of as often as I can because that's how I make my money. I have to be buying. I have to be buying houses. And what I do with those houses, it depends. I mean, sometimes I'm going to keep them. Sometimes I'm going to fix them up and, and, and sell them. Or sometimes I'm just going to sell them to somebody else. But playing Monopoly for a living, that's what I do. And what I'm thinking is going to happen in the very near future is I'm going to be in an appointment with a seller, and I'm going to say, why are you selling your home? Tell me what's going on. What's the best way that I can help you? How can we help each other? These are the kind of things that I like to talk about when I'm in front of a seller. And when the seller says, I'm a little bit behind in my mortgage. I've had some trouble making the bills and paying the bills because of the coronavirus and I lost my job and, and this reason and that reason. And I think that that's going to happen often. If you look at the statistics, people applying for loans these days is off by 39% was a number I just heard. And so if, if, if that number correlates over to people who've lost their jobs are in one out of three, that means that one out of every three sellers that you talk to, the potential for that person to have lost their job and could be behind in their mortgage is very, very possible. So these are questions you have to ask people when you're in front of people who are selling their houses. And one of the best ways that I love to implement is short sales. Now, short sales is not the only strategy. Certainly, you could do a subject two. And, a, and if you don't know about subject two, if you don't know about trust, if you don't know about seller financing, if you don't know about these creative financing strategies, you need to get your butt to investor schooling. Thursday night at 7 p.m. So you can attend our school live when the coronavirus is gone. But until then, you can simply go to InvestorSchooling.com, put your name and email address in, and attend one of our classes virtually through Zoom. And uh, we talk about these things all the time. So anytime someone says to me that they're behind in their mortgage, it's a wonderful opportunity for the buyer. You begin a short sale. And I'm not going to explain the whole process here, but we have a professional short sale negotiator who will negotiate the deal for us, who will talk to the bank, who will talk to the seller, who will talk to the buyer, who will put the whole, all the pieces of the puzzle together to see that everybody wins in this thing. So what does the investor like me get? I get a house for a deep, deep discount. So now I can make some decent money off of this house if I can get the property all the way to settlement. And a good short sale negotiator helps make that happen. So that's a really critical relationship that we have here. If you're a member of Investor Schooling, if you are a student at Investor Schooling, we will share with you who our short sale negotiator is, and you can use that person. So this is one of the many benefits that you get from being a part of this school. What does the seller get? The seller gets 
a complete forgiveness for the loan that they owed, they often get paid something by the bank to walk away, and they don't get that foreclosure on their on their uh, credit and on their you know on their history. So these are just sure they do. Sure they do. Which is probably the greatest reason to do it. Sure. And my job is to find these sellers, explain them how these short sales work, find a buyer who's interested in buying it, which I have several, and making all of this come to fruition. And I'm helping people. And I can feel good about what I'm doing for a living. Am I getting a house cheap? Sure I am. But uh, I'm also helping this person who has a house and they don't have the foggiest clue how to get out of it. Very cool. That's exactly why I like short sales too. It, it, you know, it's it's so helpful to, to to sell in a short sale. You're doing somebody else a favor. If you have a house, you're doing somebody else a favor, and and they're helping you with a favor as well. All right, I gotta go back. Okay, <laughs> all right, hold on one second here. All right, and so so we're sharing microphones again. By the way, look how close Phil and I are. <laughs> <laughs> Only on Facebook Live you can see it. Why don't you talk a little bit about subject two, because that can be Absolutely. just as prevalent in this time frame as a short sale. Yeah, so Phil's saying to talk about subject two. So here's the deal with subject two. Subject two is a great way to acquire properties without any money. If you have bad credit or good credit, it doesn't even matter. You could basically take over somebody's mortgage payment, and this is what I like to do. Basically, you have somebody, let's say, for example, they have a house, and uh, and even if the house is worth, let's say, it's worth 100000 and they owe 110000 Now, they can't sell it, especially in this market. There's no buyers out there anyway, but if they try to sell it, they're going to have a tough time selling it because they have to come to closing with money. Minimum they have to come through is $10,000. Maybe they have to come to also with, uh, with transfer taxes and maybe some other fees and maybe even a realtor fee, so it could cost them $18,000, 19000 to sell their house for a hundred thousand because they owe 110 I walk in there and I say listen what's your what's your mortgage payment let's say for example it's let's say it's let's say for example it's a thousand dollars right and I can rent that place for 1200 bucks well I'll take over that mortgage payment I'll rent it they can move they don't have to worry about it anymore and it makes it very simple now that's a, yeah it's right exactly it's a simple thing to talk about and it's a simple thing to explain there's just some I wouldn't call it complicated paperwork, but some paperwork you really need to do to make it right. So that, and again, that's what we teach in investor schooling. Uh, you know, we'll teach you the paperwork. We have the paperwork too for our students, which is kind of neat too. We have paperwork that we consider samples, and we can show you how we do it. Phil and I use this paperwork, and that's how we stay in this business. All right. So if you guys have any other questions, feel free to call in. You could call in. Um, at uh, 855-939-1137, you can call in right now. If you have any questions, you can throw some questions up on Facebook if you'd like. And we would love to talk to you. We'd love to hear you. It's always more interesting when somebody calls in and has a really good question like Josh a little while ago. So if you have a question, feel free to call in. Tell us tell us uh, what you have in mind. Uh, we're going to be talking about stock options in just a couple of minutes, right? Absolutely. I think after the next break, right? So so uh, be awesome. So let me know when you guys want to talk about anything. If you guys want to have a stock that you want me to, to talk about, feel free to post it into Facebook or call us with it, and I'll be happy to talk to you about that specific stock. All right, take it away, Phil. All right, so when we come back, we're going to be back in two minutes, and when we come back, we're going to give you our stock option picks of the week. So you don't want to miss this. See you in two minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, Investorschooling.com. Hey everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner Phil Falcone tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. 
I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. What's up, what's up, people? Hold on. I got to I gotta go over here for a second. All right. What's up, what's up, people? We're here at Investor Schooling Live, and we are here in our Langhorn office. We have set up a system down here so we can actually talk to the studio, which is kind of cool, and it's working out pretty well. As you can tell, a couple little bugs, but no big deal. We're loving it. All right. Um, so, actually, Teresa has asked a question on Facebook that I think is important. And <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm almost there. And the question was, if someone has, uh, ha someone asked if personal credit worthy matters as it pertains to the PPP loan. I, I don't think so. They didn't run my credit. So I, the answer is I don't think so. So when I played, when I applied for the loan, they didn't ask me about my credit. They, they asked me for my social security number, but they didn't ask for it. So I'm assuming that it's probably not necessary if you have a, if your personal credit worthy matters. I would imagine that if your business credit is really, really bad, they might not give it to you, but they still might. I mean, if you could prove you're still in business, they probably would still give it to you. So I hope I answered your question, Teresa. I'm not sure. If anybody else has a question, they want to call in 855-939-1137. We could try it. I'm going to have to move this microphone over here if we talk about stock options. So um, let's talk a little bit. Of, I, I'm going to have you come over here, Phil, if you have any questions for me. So if you guys have any questions about stock options or a stock you want to talk about, feel free. To ask now, either ask on Facebook or feel free to call in. You can call in at 855-939-1137. Uh, so, so um, Josh on Facebook had put up a stock. I'm going to take a look at it because I really don't know it, which is Zen, G-E-N. And I'm going to look it up real quick while we while we um, talk about it. It sounds like some kind of yoga studio. I, I know, right? Or uh, Or maybe a smoothie place. Yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> okay, so it's Zendesk is what it is. And so let me take a look at this chart. So I go to three-month chart. You guys can't see what I'm seeing, but I will tell you that I don't really see anything here as a stock option. As a stock, I don't know. Um, it was as high as 93 months ago, which is awesome. And it was as low as 57, 58. And it hit a double bottom right around 55, 56. And now it's already at 73. So I'm thinking you probably missed it. Um, I would wait for this thing to go maybe that's 60 again if it hits 60. Now look, here's the reality. The reality is we're going to have a problem again. It's going to happen again. We're going to get another drop. And I want to talk about this drop that's coming because it's not the same drop that we just had. Absolutely not the same drop that we just had. The drop that we had was ridiculous. It brought us to below 18,000 for a second or two. And that's just a nightmare. So. I believe, by the way, my my goal, or not my goal, my hope is that we hit 25,000 this week, and 25,000 will be more of a normal number for the for the Dow, and will probably be normal between 22 and 25,000, um, assuming nothing major changes. I mean, if we get uh, all of a sudden we get a, a huge loss of people in in a you know, coronavirus that may change it or if we have everything open and 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 there was no economic damage which i doubt then the, the then the stock market will kick back up to the 29,000 if that happens again but that's not going to happen for a while so 
25,000 to 22,000 is probably the range we're going to be in over the next few months. And as long as it stays there, honestly, the stock market is healthy. Now, I realize that, you know, some of you guys are out of work. Some, some of you guys have problems right now. And that doesn't really make you feel that great. But it is what it is. It's, that's what we're looking for. All right. So if you guys want to want to know what I think is going to come up right now. By the way, we are heading into earnings season. So earnings season usually is a good thing for most stocks. Now, of course, you know, the bank stocks got hit a little bit. Actually, they got hit pretty pretty badly uh, last month. But the weird part is we just talked about the PPP loan, which is the f they're getting 5% bonuses on all this money that they're handing out, which means, of course, that guess what? Next earnings is going to be really good. Not this one. It just passed. It happened. But next earning, they got extra money. They got free money. Now, there are people out there, and you realize this as well, that you're not they're not going to be paying their their mortgages. And that's going to affect and that's going to the affect mortgage companies. Mortgage but most of these people are these people are going to be on a uh, deferment plan, plan, which, by the way, is really bad. i got to talk about this for a second. If you have the option to defer your mortgage and you can afford to pay your mortgage, do not defer your mortgage. It is a big mistake. As of now, the way it is written, it's written that four months from now, if you defer your mortgage three months, four months from now, you have to pay three months plus the fourth month. Now look, that's a really bad idea. Do I have a feeling they're going to change that? Yeah, probably. Very likely they're going to change it. But let's talk about some other problems with that. Let's say you want to do a refinance 12 months from now. Uh, you know, within the next 12 months, whatever. Maybe rates go down. Maybe you buy another house, and the mortgage company says, "Hey, did you pay your mortgage payment in the last 12 months?" And you're going to have to say no. And that means probably an instant denial. Can they change that in underwriting? Maybe, but why would you take the risk? So don't make the mistake. <clears throat> don't make the mistake of not making your mortgage payment. So getting back to that, there are still people who are making their mortgage payments. So that's why the banks are going to do fine. In fact, I, I foresee that the next earnings for banks is going to do really well, surprisingly, because of the PPP. So the banks that hit it hard, like Bank of America, you guys want to know why Bank of America was the first one out there to have it? Because they were the smartest ones out there to have it. They knew that if they if they got out there first, they get the lion's share of the money. And that's why they did it. Look, here, Facebook. You guys, some of you guys are watching us on Facebook right now. We got, you know, we got a couple of dozen people who watch us on Facebook for this show. How many people have spent more time on Facebook, like me, oh boy, than most mo than you have done in the past? If you spent more time on Facebook than you've done in the past, then you know Facebook is going to be an awesome stock. Facebook is sitting there at 180 right now, which is very low for Facebook. First of all, Facebook, my personal belief is Facebook is way undervalued. It's been undervalued even before this mess. It was undervalued at at um at 220. It was undervalued. So we're going to go right back there. You can actually, if you look at some charts, you just look at Netflix and you look at um, uh, so like uh, Roku, they're almost back to where they were pre-coronavirus. That means Facebook is heading there. And believe me, not only is Facebook heading there, but if you guys, I actually do this now and then. I actually go on Facebook and I scroll down on Facebook just to see how many posts it takes to get to an ad. And as long as it's four or five posts to get to an ad, I know Facebook is doing fine. It, it was funny because it was about it was one short period of time, uh, right after the coronavirus started, that I went on there and it took seven posts to get to an ad. So my guess is at that point everybody was pulling their ads because they wanted to pull their ads for they want to pull their ads for you know things that were obviously not the right thing to sell at this moment. But it went back fast. As a matter of fact, a lot of a lot of our students come from Facebook. We do a lot of advertising on Facebook. If you scroll through Facebook and you've seen uh, you've seen Investor Schooling or you've seen the the uh, the stock options Sultan, you know that that's all coming from Facebook ads. And I'm telling you right now, Facebook. I, I actually believe that this earnings, Facebook is going to blow right past where they were before. They almost hit 225. They're going to blow right past it. They're going to probably be in the 230s, 240s after this earnings. Now. For our students, we know that we don't hold we don't hold options over earnings, but you know that if you're going to buy the stock, it's a great stock to buy. If you're going to buy the option, if you haven't already bought the option, we bought a bunch of it this week. If you bought the option, we're going to try to get out at 185, some of it 190, and we're just going to take that money and we're going to run and we're going to be fine with it. But watch Facebook. Facebook's going to pop. That's my prediction, only because of everything. Every other sign out there says that it's it's going to happen. 
All right. Anybody else have a option or a stock that they want to talk about? I'd be more than happy to talk about it. Plus, if you guys have anything else you want to talk about, we obviously you can call us. Uh, you can call us at 855-939-1137, and we'd be more than happy to do it. All right, cool. So we got about five more minutes. So let's talk about a little bit about, I don't know, what do you want to talk about, Phil? Well, why don't we uh, take a look at Ford? Ford, oh, Ford. and GE. Ford. Yeah, Ford, Ford, Ford and GE. So Phil wants to talk about Ford and GE. Those are good ones to talk about as well. So let's talk about Ford. Ford's at $5 right now. I'm actually looking for Ford to hit 450 and I'm all over it. Uh, it's not going to stay here long, but it's going to stay here. The question is how long. And a uh, stock option, for you guys who know how stock options work, they're all about time. So because they're all about time, there's nothing I can do. I've got to be. I've got to make sure that I'm time that that my timing is correct with Ford. Ford. Uh, Ford is also one of the people. I think they're also doing uh, masks. Too. I mean, uh, ventilators, as, uh, along with GM. Now, I don't know if Ford and GM. Okay, look. Do I think it's a good idea to Ford and GM of spending time making ventilators? Absolutely. Do I think it's a good business model for them? I don't really think so. I think it's a terrible business model for both Ford and GM. I think it's a great publicity stunt for both of them, and they will make they they, they will benefit from it as a as as the publicity goes. In fact, I, I, I'll share just my opinion. I mean, even Cuomo says he doesn't need the ventilators that are needed anymore. He's given he's given some away to other states. So clearly, maybe we don't need all these ventilators, but they'll make them and they'll sell them and they'll get bonuses from the from the government for them, and that's fine. That'll help. Now, you'll also keep some people on the assembly line, which I think is also great, but that's not really a good business model for them. The business model for Ford is making trucks, making cars, and trucks is going to be the big thing for them. Now, how many people are going to be buying trucks next in the next few months? Again, it's going to be tough to see. So I don't think Ford's going much past seven. But if it's at four and a half, and I go from four and a half to seven on a play, on an options play, that's a lot of money if you play it right. That's why I like Ford as an option. Uh, if you want to hold on to Ford as a stock, I don't think it's that great of a stock. I mean, look, right now, the funny part is right now the dividend is 11.72% 11, 11 because the uh, stock is so low. But I also don't think they're going to be able to maintain that dividend. I'm going to guess that dividend is going to chop probably down to probably down to 10% of that dividend. And, and that would still be a nice dividend, but it, it's not going to be that kind of a dividend. But if you're buying the stock and you want to make some money on it, that's a great dividend. I mean, 11% on a dividend on a, on a, on a five dollar stock go for it all right what was the other one you had for me phil well uh hold on before you leave ford why don't you sure. go to the three month chart okay. and i want to share with you my opinion on the masks thing sure. the mask thing is a gimmick okay the, you can't take a uh, plant designed with robots to build vehicles and turn lines into all right they're doing it on the side they're, are they really making them yeah they're making them but it's a great publicity stunt, and it makes them seem like good guys. And and any there's not a company out there that couldn't or wouldn't want to be considered as good people. So I think it's just all good, really, for them. So it really comes down to what do you think of the chart? Yeah. So going back to the chart, as I said, you know, in the chart, the numbers again, you know, like right before the coronavirus, we were right around nine-ish, right? And you know, and then it dropped down to as low as four and a half, four actually four four point two seven, I think was the lowest. And you have to understand that we have well, actually 4.01 was the lowest, but it's not it's not jumping back to nine. We're probably going to hit we're probably going to hit seven, no doubt in my mind. We're going to hit seven, but it may take a little while. As a matter of fact, it looks like we might have even hit. It looks like we had the, the same numbers. Uh, if we look at 5.42, I'm looking at a chart right now, so you guys can't see what I'm seeing, but I'm looking at the chart. It looks like five five and a half was a double top which might mean that it's going to be going down. I might be able to get to my four and a half, which is where I want to be to buy it. So I actually set alerts in my phone, and when I set these alerts, I set these alerts so it tells me when stocks hit certain numbers for me to decide whether I want to buy an option on it. So my alert for Ford is set at four and a half, and I think it's a great play. I think we're uh, running out of time, so uh, let me go over to, to you, Phil, and, and uh, let you finish out. I don't know if we're that far out, but I think we got about 30 seconds. All right, so thanks for listening today. If you're uh, interested in advertising on our show and uh, you could benefit from having a large audience of real realtors and real estate investors, you definitely want to give us a call. You can just email us. is the easiest way to get a hold of us. It's, uh, what is it, info at investorschooling.com? 
Yeah, yeah that'll work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Info at investorschooling.com. Or you can always just uh, come to the school and talk to us personally. We're always here on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. Don't forget that that's uh, one of the best ways. I mean, even with the coronavirus, you can just dial right in. There's a link on the bottom of the page on investorschooling.com, and you can attend our classes Thursday night. So uh, on Monday nights, we do a mastermind meeting, and that's something uh, really amazing that you, you should come check out. But we'd like you to come to the Thursday night class. It's complimentary, no cost. Just come on out and see what we're doing here. Learn about some amazing strategies in the real estate business and stock option investing business where you can make money multiple ways no matter what's going on with the virus. You still can be out there making it happen. Uh, hey, John, what's the word? What kind of time we got left? All right. So we're going to wrap it up at this point. Uh, our address is 108 Corporate Drive, Langhorne, Pennsylvania. And we are out of here. Thanks for listening.